Today I'm going to compare for you the best and worst of communication styles in a romantic relationship. The problem with communication is the illusion that it has been accomplished. That's a quote from George Bernard Shaw. Basically what he's saying, and he's correct, um, that a lot of the time people feel that they're communicating effectively when in reality they're not. Communication is a huge source of conflict in relationships, particularly romantic ones. Um, I'm currently taking a, a marriage and family course, so it's giving me access to a lot of valuable information about this topic. And I was just flipping through my text and I realized how valuable this information was because I know that personally uh, I struggle with communication in my own relationship. So the chances are that some of you guys do as well. And even if anyone's not in a relationship, this is still going to be applicable down the line if you guys get into one. Um, I know that this is a broad topic, but I'm going to be narrowing everything down to three main communication styles. And within those styles, I'm going to be talking about a few key aspects um, that relate to those styles. To start off, I'm going to explain the different aspects of an avoiding communication style. People or couples that use this style are going to be unassertive and uncooperative, which is a really bad combination. Um, the goal, I guess you could say, if there is one of the couples, is to avoid confrontation at all costs. They're going to typically exhibit behaviors such as branching and escapism. Branching just means that um, you're going out on different limbs that really have nothing to do with what you started talking about in the first place. And escapism is denial and withdrawal from the problem. So what they're thinking in their mind is, I'm just going to put this out of my mind and I'll deal with this later, when in reality they never come back to deal with it. Um, some random facts that I have about this uh, style in particular are that Marchand and Hawk from my Marriage and Family book found that there's um, a research that shows that depressed spouses are particularly likely to use avoidance style communication as their choice. So that's just another way of saying that if you do choose to use this style, you're going to up your chances of becoming depressed, which is most likely due to the fact that you're not really communicating and you're not getting your feelings out there and you're holding everything inside and obviously that can lead to depression. Um, now I'm going to outline for you, oh sorry, additionally there is another statistic that I'd like to show you guys um, with this here and this is just a graph that's comparing male and female uh, communication style choices and as you can see uh, males are much more likely than females to use the avoidance communication style. Avoidance is the dotted um, bar right there. And in addition to males using the avoidance style more than females, they are also more likely to use the competition style, which is the black one as you can see here. So um, now I'm going to be outlining the um, competition style for you guys. Couples that use this style are going to be uncooperative and assertive, which is a really bad combination. Um, there really isn't a goal in this because there's no, the couples that use this style don't want to come to a solution. They want to win the argument and they want to one-up each other. The goal isn't to figure something out, it's just to kind of attack each other. And um, additionally, couples are going to be trying to force their own opinions onto their partner without allowing open communication to occur. You're also going to typically see verbally um, or verbal attacks going on, which isn't something like verbal abuse. It's normally just going to be hurtful words or phrases that are being said. And to demonstrate that, I have an example um, of a video from the, from the TV show Friends. And I put together this little clip that's going to show a perfect example of the style. Oops. Volume buttons on the dashboard. It's that big round button. On the dashboard. That, uh, on top, right in front of you, where you were pushing the picture mute or the display mute? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. On the dashboard, on top of the counter. Where you push the picture mute? Not with the mouse. Not with the mouse. Little screen. Yes, there's a knob. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
don't know how to describe a knob any differently, but this is a knob. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> you have rambled on for 18 pages. <laughs> Front and back! <laughs> Apostrophe R-E means you are. Why do you are means you're. You know, I can't believe I even thought of getting back together with you. We are so over. <laughs> Fine by me! Yes. Okay. So obviously that's a pretty funny example, but things like that do happen a lot, and normally if that's happening to you, it's not really funny. If um, well, Ross and Rachel are fighting over whether or not they're on a break, and instead of choosing to deal with that, they're attacking each other's grammar. Ross is saying, you're spelled, you, in the letter you wrote me, you didn't spell your correctly. That's, that has nothing to do with the problem, and his goal is just to hurt Rachel. Rachel comes back by saying things like, I don't even care that we're together. You know, it's, it's not really a healthy communication style. Obviously, the style does have the potential to hurt and possibly end a relationship, so therefore it does have a really important negative consequence. Couples that use the style are much more likely to have psychological damage from it, and that's a pretty serious thing because you're, you're supposed to be trusting this person, um, and you place all your love in them, and then they say these hurtful things to you. Now that I've outlined the two worst communication styles, I'm going to focus on the ultimate communication style, which is collaborative. And couples in the style are going to be both assertive and um, assertive and cooperative, which is the perfect combination. The, uh, the ultimate goal, I guess, is to find a solution that both couple, uh, both partners are okay with, and more importantly, are comfortable with. It's a harmonious solution that they come to. It's also important for couples that use the style to. Um, to feel that they, they can express their opinions without fear of being rejected or criticized. That's gonna end up building the trust in the relationship, which is key. And since this is, the style, this is the style that most of you guys should aim to use because it's the most healthy, I'm gonna talk about a few key aspects that you guys should keep in mind if you wanna use this style. Firstly, you should always use I statements instead of you statements. An example of an I statement would be, I get sad when you don't call me and would feel better if we could communicate a little bit more. And a you statement would be, um, you never put in the effort to talk to me. You statements, saying the word you just comes off a little bit more aggressive than saying the word I. And people that say, if you say I to someone, I feel this way, it's going to be less aggressive and they're going to feel a little bit more, they're going to respond positively to your statement. Secondly, you should always use open-ended questions instead of closed-ended. Open-ended questions would be, how do you feel about me, instead of, do you love me? Hopefully, if you say, do you love me, they're going to say yes. But if you're asking that question, you probably want more than just yes. If you, it's all about setting your partner up for success. So if you want to get more than a yes answer, you have to ask a question that's going to allow your partner to give you more than that. Lastly, and most importantly, you should always use reflective listening which is just the way of saying that you should always restate what your partner has said. That way you can show them that you understand what they're, they're saying and you're clearing up any confusion that there could be. Today I've talked about the three main communication styles in a romantic relationship and talked about a couple different aspects regarding them, uh, regarding the styles. And I hope that this information that I presented to you guys can allow you to communicate more effectively in a relationship. <laughs> Miguel, tell us what you thought. Let's start with those 
minor issues.